It's the end of the day with Ray. Hello, my friends. Hey, today I want to bring back Norm McConaughey. Obviously, folks, you know Norm. Norm has built the biggest, you know what? Here's the deal. It's really the biggest and the best e-commerce platform the Imagine Channel's ever seen. He's owned that space for decades. There's a couple people out there that dabble in it. But today I don't want to talk about e-commerce at a dealer level the way you might think. What I want to talk about is the competitors that are outside of the channel, sitting on the borders of the channel, that are eating the channel's lunch, and these competitors are a little bit scary, and I'm hoping today's video will wake up my friends at the Document Interview Channel that are still, well, kind of fighting or arguing whether or not they should have an e-commerce platform. Norm, how are you doing, man? It's always great talking with you, buddy. Hey, I'm doing great, Ray. Thanks for having me on today. Well, you know, Norm, we were having a conversation the other day, and I said, holy crap, we got to share this with our friends in the Amity channel. And, you know, I want to just cut to the chase. You know, Amazon's revenues last year were $386 billion. They had a 38% increase, an increase of $100 billion. And, you know, the reason why we all know, people, the world was locked down. People saw an e-commerce platform as a way to get goods and services brought to their house or brought to them where they were. And that's no different than the print sector. You know, we see today, Norm, where the manufacturers are selling direct to, M to they're, they're selling products to Amazon, who Amazon selling those products to end users. It's all in the A4 category. Obviously, they're not selling big stores in A3s. But I want you to share with us a little bit of some of the insights that you've learned over the last year. I know you're tight. You understand Amazon and the big players in this space. But, you know, share some of these stories because I think they're, they're real eye-openers. They're real eye-openers. Sure. So I think the, the, the first thing everybody in the space should do is, is really do their own dive and research and figure out what's going on right. at Amazon. There's, it, there's a, any amount of first person research you can do, you should. And yep. since most of us, all your employees, likely owners are using Amazon, go on there, start looking for products that you sell yourself and they're available. A couple of years ago, I went on Amazon and I looked at the, let's say the, the supply space for a few SKUs. What blew me away was that there was very little evidence of the OEM not really playing. So anybody that would be searching for supplies a couple of years ago would have been just finding compatibles. Mm -hmm. and so the compatibles were eating the lunch of the OEMs for each one of the SKUs. I think the you know HP, Xeroxes, Lexmarks of the world had to react to that mm -hmm. because our Amazon's a huge channel. Well, I'll, I'll never forget looking at one specific SKU in general. It was a it was a brother SKU, not even like a really high-end, one of their largest SKUs. And it had, at the time, five or 600 reviews of the particular product. And that was one of many compatibles that were out there. Mm -hmm. So if, if you understand that less than 1% of the people ever do a review, and you start seeing product with 500 reviews or 1,000 reviews, you start to say, holy cow, there's a lot of business that's being put through here. So. So that kind of led me to believe, like, well, it's only even out of time before OEM start reacting to it. Um, fast forward to today, looking at the space, we've just gone through, you know, COVID. Hopefully, we're, you know, we're, we're coming out the other end of it. Dealers have had to deal with the, you know, the reduction of print. Then, you know, the pandemic meant reduction of print from the office migration towards the home office, etc. Now, I think there's on its own a third pillar of things that you need to worry about, you need to be concerned about, and you need to have a strategy about, and that's Amazon. Mm -hmm. uh, I put this one up particularly to have a look at. It's a pretty common HP SKU, uh, a 410X, and within Canada, okay, just within Canada, this SKU has 781 reviews, okay? Wow. So, so, so you can multiply that by 100, probably a few hundred in terms of the number of the, the amount of volume that's being put out there, supplies, hardware, other things. So, so you really have to, I think, understand what the implications of all this are. The, the OEMs have been, I think many of them trying to tell the dealers for years, get online. People want to buy online. People are now buying online. And and, and they've gone ahead, I don't know whether in some cases they're going directly, sometimes they're using a channel or a third party company to, to do it, but Amazon is alive and well and is doing better than any single channel partner that the OEMs have, like by a mile, mm -hmm. in terms of the volume that it's selling. Uh, and when we think about the logistics, this is a prime product, right, which means it's going to get shipped tomorrow if I decide to order it. Its price is absolutely in line. You can check it out with um, with 
what HP would put on his map pricing. Mm -hmm. I'm not picking on HP here. I'm just saying, that, you know, I understand a lot of the things that they're doing. So they have a minimum advertised price. It's a good price. It's great. Um, but I, you, we also know how much HP has to give uh, or Amazon takes from the seller. You know, mm -hmm. they're going to take 15 to 20 percent of that product and that price up front. You know, all the logistics and things that are being put out there. You're not going to understand who the customer is because that's Amazon's customer. You're just going to be the fulfiller and send it out to them. Um, but I could foresee a day. Why would a company like HP use a third party company to execute this when eventually, it, or even that third party that's going to turn around and ask Synex or Tech Data or Ingram to fulfill it on their, on their behalf? Last time I checked, that's logistics in the world, owned by Amazon. Hold on. Well, you know, Norm, you bring up a great topic. And, you know, this we, we talked about how Amazon's a threat to our reseller friends. And obviously, they're taking more and more of that business. And as we move more yeah. to the A4 platform, that's a big threat. They need to address it. But, you know, I, I'm thinking Amazon's also a threat to tech data, to Ingram Micro, to Synex. Absolutely. They're the world's largest logistic agent. I mean, at the end of the day, if you have a product and you want to deliver it in the global marketplace, there's probably no better way to do that than Amazon. Well, the future, maybe we'll see resellers having alignments with Amazon around technology. You know, Amazon does quite a few tens and tens of billions. I think it's 40 something billion dollars worth of business through third party resellers. And so, you know, there could be a real strategy that one day our friends are actually partnered with Amazon. Who knows? But, you know, Norm, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that during this pandemic, the dealer should have got on an e-commerce platform. They should have built it. Whether or not they understood all the dynamics of it, they should have built it. Because when you build it, guess what? Through that process of using it and having your customers use it, you improve it and you get better at it. We should be in the improvement stage. And unfortunately, for a lot of our friends, we're still in the decision stage, which is really insane. And, you know, I, I was thinking about my own website. When I reached out to you and I said, hey, Norm, I'm going to have a end of the day with Ray. You know, we're going to have a collaborative platform. I need a website. And I want it to be an e-commerce website. It surprises me to this day when I hear the cha-ching in the middle of the night, and someone from the south of France just became an individual supporter. And so, you know, I, I don't know, you know, where we got to go with our friends to get them to understand this, but I think what you just talked about with these reviews and, you know, Amazon, obviously, you know, the government's trying to break them up. If they break them up and they become a tech giant on their own, is that even worse? So, you know, it's, it's not about trying to beat Amazon. It's about trying to see what Amazon does well and how can you do that well yourself. Where, where do you think we're going wrong with the folks that actually set up some websites? They have some e-commerce platforms, but they're still struggling in implementation. What, what, what are we missing, Norm? Sure. So I, I think it's, I can't understand why there's not the sense of urgency. Mm -hmm. I, I also think that many of the people that are setting up websites and their, their, their strategy on the web is to get more leads and try to bring those customers in. Mm -hmm. So that they can sell them the tra you know the traditional way. Yeah. In other words, you take a digital customer, you know somebody that's come to you online, somebody that's used to buying things online, and what most dealers want to do is is break that. They want to take them back offline, send the sales rep out, pump them up with a larger you know product. And I think in many cases that's always worked for us, but it doesn't anymore. No, customers and right. people are just not used to it. And so the, the vision that I have, if I can share it with, is is everybody seen the movie Jerry Maguire? Mm -hmm. We all remember when Jerry got fired, right? Mm -hmm. He and Bob Sugar, what were they doing? They were, they, they were immediately trying to call up people and get, you know, they were at war trying to get those prospects that they had, those customers back online. So Jerry's calling them, Bob Sugar's mm -hmm. calling them. That's the attitude you have to have, the sense of urgency that, that you know, Amazon is out there. They're calling, they're, they're prodding, they're getting all of these customers every single day. You need to fight for the customers that you have and you need to take their hand and you need to bring them over into buying online from you. Because if you don't bring them to you, then they're immediately going to go and buy that stuff from Amazon. Well, you That's know, what's going to happen. Well, you bring up a great point. You know, you look at a dealer that, you know, even some of these smaller dealers, they're, they're going to have 1,000, 1,500 customers. Let's just take the smaller dealers. They got 1,000, 1,500 customers. They set up an e-commerce platform. You are not going to compete with Amazon in the way you think. This is how you're going to compete with Amazon. You're going to go to those 1,500 customers that are already your customers, where you already have relationships with, and you're going to drag them to your website. You're going to teach them how to navigate through there, and you're going to give them products and services that they need and supplies. You start there. 
And then from there you grow. And every time you set up a new customer, maybe you have a portal where they actually pay you online. Because you're right, Norm. One thing about Amazon, when I buy something from Amazon, they do not take me to some salesperson. As a matter of fact, their goal is to try to get me to buy something as quick as I could. <laughs> and they try to target me based on analytics to make that experience even better. So, well, Norm, it's been a, it's been a crazy year, that's for sure. I mean, <laughs> I just, I'm hoping our friends take advantage of this. I don't know what they're waiting for. You know? Yeah, I, I leave you with that one thing that you're, you know, you're explaining. Amazon's out there. The, you know, the, you, you're not going to beat Amazon. If somebody knows what they want to buy, mm -hmm. Amazon's the best place in the world to go to buy it, mm -hmm. right? The beautiful thing in our, our industry is what happens when the customer, your customers, don't exactly know what to buy. Then Amazon's just a, a mess. Yep. You don't, they're not going to help you figure that out. As long as you, the dealer, can meld the online world with that sophistication, that concierge ability to say, I can help you get what you need. I can just, just call me, email me. I'm here for you. I'll put that together. Amazon will never do that. That's how you'll always beat them. Okay. But not even getting online, not even getting into the game to play, that's got to change. If you're sitting out there still considering it, jump in. Absolutely. Head first. <laughs> Norm, it's always good talking with you. I look forward to having you on again. We're getting a little choppy uh, reception here, but you know, Norm, if they don't get online, there's one thing we do know for sure. Status quo is the killer of all that will be invented. Don't get stuck in status quo, and I'll see you all tomorrow.